Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. As usual, at this press conference, we'll be sharing our, uh, the fourth quarter economic outturn. And with me today, it's Datuk Sri Dr. Muhammad Uzay, uh, our chief statistician, who will also be sharing um, some of the presentation. GDP growth across major and regional economies expanded at a modest pace in the fourth quarter of 2019. In the advanced economies, continued weakness in investment activity weigh on growth. Nevertheless, private consumption remains stable on the back of supportive labour market conditions. In the US, growth was further boosted by higher public spending and lower imports. In the regional economies, growth improved on account of a mild recovery in exports. Fiscal and monetary stimulus also provided some support to domestic demand. Now, turning on to Malaysia, growth in the fourth quarter was driven by higher private sector spending, both by households and businesses. Private sector spending grew by 7.4% in the fourth quarter compared to 5.4% in the third quarter of 2019. Private investment also registered a smaller contraction as capital spending by public corporations improved during the quarter. However, growth was weighed down by the contraction in net exports due to the decline in both manufactured and supply disruptions that affected commodities exports. The economic performance in the fourth quarter was affected by supply disruptions in the agriculture and mining sectors. In agriculture, oil palm production contracted due to the severe dry weather conditions and cutbacks in fertilizer application earlier in the year. In mining, natural gas production declined following temporary facility closures, while crude oil production gradually recovered from major maintenance work in the previous quarter, it remained in contraction. Let me now invite Datuk Sri Dr. Muhammad Uze to announce Malaysia's fourth quarter GDP growth. Thank you, Governor. As a result of supply disruption in the agriculture and mining sectors, growth of Malaysia economy moderated to 3.6% in the fourth quarter of 2019. This bring the overall growth for the year 2019 to 4.3%. On the supply side, growth in the fourth quarter was supported by stronger services sector activities following firm consumer-related spending. The manufacturing sector grew by 3% with lower E&E &E production growth and spillover from disruption in the community sector. The construction sector recover due to strong growth in the civil engineering and the turnaround in the residential subsector. The contraction in the mining sector was smaller due to a lower decline in oil production. Meanwhile, the agriculture sector contracted as oil pump production was affected by severe dry weather condition and fertilizer cutbacks in the early part of 2019. Thank you, Dr. Suri. On the demand side, private consumption grew strongly by 8.1% during the quarter. Growth was supported by sustained spending on necessities such as food and transportation, as well as leisure-related spending such as restaurants and hotels and recreational services. Household spending during the quarter was underpinned by positive income and employment growth amid modest inflationary pressures. Private investment registered a stronger growth of 4.2% in the fourth quarter of 2019. Growth was mainly supported by improvements in structure investments, particularly in the civil engineering and residential segments. Ongoing investments and expansion in facilities in the services and manufacturing sectors underpin private investment growth during the quarter. On the external front, 
Malaysia's growth export contracted further by 3.3%. Malaysia's diversified export base helped to partly offset the impact of weaker E&E and mineral exports amid positive growth in non-E&E exports. Gross import growth recorded a smaller contraction of 4% due mainly to a positive turnaround in intermediate imports and smaller decline in capital imports. The current account surplus of the balance of payments amounted to 7.6 billion ringgit or 2% of GNI in the fourth quarter. The primary income account registered a larger deficit of 15.7 billion ringgit arising from higher investment income accrued to foreign firms. The services account registered a larger deficit of 4 billion ringgit following lower tourist arrivals and spending during the quarter. Meanwhile, the good surplus widened to 32.8 billion ringgit supported by higher non-ENE exports and crude palm oil prices. Overall, the Malaysian economy grew by 4.3% in 2019. Growth was affected by the challenging external environment, the disruptions in the commodity-related sectors, and contraction in public investment activity. Nonetheless, overall growth was supported by resilient private sector spending and continued expansion in the manufacturing and services sectors. Let me now move on to the highlights in monetary and financial developments during the quarter. Headline inflation was lower in the fourth quarter as the impact of the SST implementation lapsed. This brings headline inflation to average at 0.7% for 2019 as a whole. For 2020, headline inflation is projected to average higher but remain modest. Its trajectory will be dependent on global oil and commodity price developments and the timing of the lifting of the domestic retail fuel price ceilings. Underlying inflation is expected to remain broadly stable, reflecting the continued expansion in economic activity and the absence of strong demand pressures. Domestic financial markets saw an improvement during the quarter as global investor sentiments recovered. As such, the ringgit depreciated against the US dollar, government bond yields declined, and the domestic equity prices improved. Nonetheless, as uncertainties continue to linger on the impact of the coronavirus, global trade and global growth, and geopolitical developments, two-way capital flows and exchange rate volatility should be expected. In the fourth quarter last year, non-residence holdings of government bonds increased from 22.1% to 24.3%, with inflows observed from a diverse group of investors. This was in tandem with inflows into emerging market in the fourth quarter, following the de-escalation of the trade dispute and monetary easing by major central banks. External debt increased by 29.9 billion ringgit during the quarter. This reflects primarily an increase in non-resident deposits and purchases of Malaysian government securities by non-residents and an increase in external borrowings by resident corporations. This was partly offset by valuation effects following stronger ringgit against selected major and regional currencies during the period. Overall, the favourable maturity and currency debt profile and availability of external buffers provide resilience against potential shocks. Outstanding loan growth to businesses improved during the quarter. There was higher loan growth in the manufacturing and sustained expansion in loans in the wholesale and retail trade, restaurants and hotels sector. This was complemented by improvements across most sectors. Meanwhile, the growth of outstanding household loans remained stable. Households and businesses, including SMEs, continue to be able to access financing, as reflected in the steady disbursement levels trending higher than historical averages. Demand for financing, as indicated by loan applications, remained broadly stable. 
loan applications sustained its momentum from the earlier improvement in the second quarter, particularly in the business segment. Asset quality remains healthy. The banking system's employment ratio improved from 1.6% to 1.5% in the fourth quarter of 2019. Last month, the MPC lowered the OPR by 25 basis points to 2.75%. While the growth of the Malaysian economy is expected to remain supported by private sector spending and improving global trade activities in 2020, the MPC is cognizant that there are downside risks to the growth prospects from both the global and domestic environment. The reduction in the OPR is therefore a preemptive move to sustain growth amid price stability. Future monetary policy considerations will continue to be guided by the risk to the outlook for domestic growth and inflation, which remain highly uncertain and are continuously evolving. MPC will monitor incoming data to inform this assessment. We are looking carefully at the impact of the coronavirus to the Malaysian economy. As the situation is still evolving, the magnitude of the impact will depend on how widespread and prolonged the outbreak is and the policy responses in respective countries. We expect the outbreak to affect growth, particularly in the first quarter of 2020. The effect will be felt largely in tourism-related sectors and to a smaller extent, the manufacturing sector due to the factory closures in China. A range of measures has been announced by the financial industry to assist those affected by the coronavirus outbreak. Some financial institutions have announced a moratorium or temporary relief from financing repayments for businesses impacted in order to give them breathing room to revive their businesses. Affected businesses should approach their financial institution early to reschedule or restructure their financing to ease their cash flow issues. Additionally, the insurance and takaful operators have announced that their policy holders will be covered for hospital admissions and treatment related to the coronavirus. While the domestic economy will be affected by the coronavirus in the immediate term, the Malaysian economy in 2020 will be underpinned by firstly, continued private sector spending supported by stable labour market conditions and a gradual improvement in investment activities. Secondly, resumption of large transportation projects such as MRT2 and Bonio, LRT3, the Gamas JB double track and ECRL are all expected to contribute around one percentage point to growth. Recovery in commodities production and operationalization of new facilities in the manufacturing and mining sectors will also support growth. And lastly, growth in 2020 will also be supported by modest improvement in global trade. Nonetheless, downside risks remain. A key downside risk is the prolonged outbreak of the coronavirus that will result in extended travel restrictions and supply disruptions from prolonged factory closures in China. A re-escalation of trade disputes could also weigh on global growth and trade activities. And thirdly, domestically, supply disruptions in the commodities sector remains a risk. Bandagara Malaysia will continue to closely monitor this risk and their implications on Malaysia's growth trajectory. As in the past practice, the bank will release the growth projection for 2020 in the upcoming publication of the Economic and Monetary Report in March. This marks the end of my presentation.